I'm Wayside Fiber. Today we are on our way to the Depot Historic Collection in Daniloquin. Journey through time. Jimmy! Right, sorry, I'm, I'm too lazy to adjust the microphone, so I'm just gonna give you like a about a 30% Jimny. Jimny! Woo, it's hard to hold that in. Australians, you need to put more salt on things. Some of these NSUs were made in Australia. Berkeley. Wait, it has three wheels. Fifty seven Chevy DeLorean. It's an Irish car. <laughs> For all you young people out there, the DeLorean is an actual vehicle. It is not a time traveling machine that was invented for the movie Back to the Future. John DeLorean also had the idea for the original Firebird. Okay, I think I might feel something coming on. Freak out. There never was, and there never will be, another century like the 20th. Progress has slowed down. In the movie, Back to the Future, Marty McFly gets into a car that looks like this in the year 1985. This car came out in 1981. And he goes back 30 years to a time when cars look like this. That's how far we came in just 30 years. Imagine what it must have felt like to have driven one of these when you were young and driven one of these when you were an adult. For the past 30 years, all cars have pretty much looked the same. The heck is this thing? It's like a four-door ute car from the 50s. Custom built, one of a kind. It, that might actually be for the best. <laughs> now this, the world needs more of this. Yellow metal flake paint. Look at that roof. Australia has such a great appreciation for American cars. Americans don't even know that Australian cars exist. Which is why Australia really appreciates being seen by an American for once. This looks like the car that James Dean died in. Royal Enfield. In the USA, we tend to think of British people as being really stuffy and boring, but we ride a lot of British motorcycles. That's not stuffy and boring. Armstrong Sidley Typhoon, United Kingdom. Never seen anything like this. Movie car from the delinquents. Might have to check that one out. Friend of the channel, Bruce, is really into buses. So here you go, Bruce. Here's a bus. I drove buses for years. School buses, transit buses, and it was the most fun job I've ever had. You were supposed to be behind schedule. If you were ahead of schedule, you got in trouble. And so you just cruise down the road. You get stuck in traffic, no big deal, you're getting paid. I might have to get one of these someday. We took one of these to Wasteland Weekend and it was just so nice. Leyland P76. Oh, the trunk's open. You know what that means. It means they got a 44-gallon drum in the back. Prepare to roll your eyes. I'm rolling them as hard as I can. On a bus in original condition. It's a Ute bus. We got very few of these in the U.S. because the, there was a tax difference for the Utes 
versus the bus. It's pretty much the same vehicle, but this was like a work truck, and so they put tariffs on it. It didn't make any sense. Unintended consequences, stupid regulations. Everyone thinks they're trying to save the world. Oh, let's pass this law, let's pass that law. Doesn't actually help anything at all. Let people figure stuff out for themselves. People can figure out how to run their own lives. 1968 Monaro. Looks a little like a Chevy Nova. 64 panel van. May run. Australia has the weirdest town names, at least to the ear of an American. I'm sure the USA has bizarre town names to the ear of an Australian. A lot of the town names in both the US and Australia are named based on in indigenous names. But we have completely different indigenous cultures on opposite sides of the earth. Punxsutawney. Sheboygan. Kalamazoo. When you're cruising across the outback in this, you don't need to worry about food. Just open your mouth. Get all the flies. If you go into the outback, I wasn't even there for very long. I inhaled a fly into my sinuses and I could feel it walking around inside of my brain. Now, I tried to just play it cool and I just figured I will ignore it and maybe I'll die of a sinus infection. And as we were driving off, plop, the fly comes out of my nose. I was covered in mucus. I know someone else from the outback who has inhaled a fly all the way into his lungs. This can't be healthy, people. In the USA, flies just want to eat your food. In Australia, the flies want to eat you. Whoa, look at this beauty. Old petrol truck. Golden Fleece. There are a lot of oil companies Australia has that the US did not have. Look at that cab. I mean, trucks today are luxurious RVs. This is no better than your average farmer's ute. He had to drive across the null board in this thing. Now this is a bumper. We have deer in the U.S., but I think kangaroos are just more of a hazard here. Y'all take it seriously. Police, police, police. Who needs them? One of our channel sponsors shared a video of one time in history when police were actually useful. 1987, they helped transport a liver through London in a police car at top speed. In spite of blue flashing lights and wailing sirens, some motorists still seem unaware of the urgency of the situation. This time a clear path through the traffic could be the difference between life and death. That's an exciting video. People like to think that Wasteland Firebird is on drugs. No, he's just high on life. He has been drug tested for what? Cannabis, cocaine, and meth. 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 <laughs> they tested me for meth. It's a Monero and a Tor and a Voxel U with charcoal power. A charcoal gas producer like those used during the Great Depression. Two bags of charcoal would get you 200 miles. It actually is charcoal powered. Beautiful pillows, mid-century furniture. This chair probably cost as much as some of the cars in this place. We take prosperity for granted. It should just go back 70 years. Look how difficult life was. This is a washing machine. This is supposed to make washing easier. If we've only had the prosperity we have today for a few decades, you can't just take it for granted and say, okay, how should we distribute all this prosperity? Because 
The big question is, what did we do right? How did we get this prosperity? Now is the exception in human history. We spent 100,000 years starving. We spent another 100 years living like this, which was like, okay, but I mean, the cell phones and the vaccines and surgery and anesthesia and satellites, this is all brand new in human history. And we need to first make sure that we understand what is it that made all of this possible? Because what if redistributing all the prosperity causes the prosperity to cease to exist? Off to Denny Eatmuster. The Jaguar over there. This has been the Daniloquin Depot Historic Vehicle Collection. I'm Wayson Firebird. Thank you for inviting me into your home or onto your portable device. Have a good night. Thanks to Matt Skelly for the camera work.